Okay, so we were just talking about why we can't divide by zero, creating ourselves a black hole in space and time, and uh, these things called asymptotes, where our graph is getting really close to them without actually ever getting there. Actually, what I said is uh, the graph converges uh, to the asymptote at infinity. And since nobody can get to infinity, the graph never gets there. It's kind of sad. It's a little bit sad. So let's uh, actually do what the objective says and find some domain, right? Let's find the domain of these things. Okay, so let f of x equal this function, 2x plus 5, and g of x equal this function, 3x minus 7. And find this thing that says f divided by g of x. This is a fancy way of saying that we're getting a new function by just dividing these two functions, okay? So let's look at what that looks like. So f divided by g of x is equal to, I'm going to put the f function on top, 2x plus 5, and the g function on the bottom, 3x minus 7. Okay, we've seen something like this before. We want to find its domain. What we were just talking about before is that you can't divide by 0. So we want to know what makes the denominator 0. What makes this equal 0? So that's what we do. Actually, I, I tend to do this. I go like this. I go 3x minus 7, and I set it not equal to 0. And pretend that's like an equation and just solve it like normal. I'd add the 7 over and divide by 3, so x cannot be equal to 7 thirds. If x was equal to 7 thirds, what will happen? Black hole, right? If x was equal to 7 thirds, I'd get 0 down in the denominator. I'm not supposed to divide by 0. So here it is in set builder notation. Let's change colors and put this also in interval notation. So if the interval notation confuses you, just draw yourself a little number line. Here I have 0. Here, let's say this is 7 thirds. And I get an open circle around that. That's the only value that's excluded. And then I've got everything else. So if I look at it like this, set builder notations, I mean uh, interval notations, very easy. Yeah, it looks kind of messy. So I would go negative infinity, comma, 7 thirds. Close the parentheses. It's not a bracket. It's got to be parentheses because you can't have it. Union. And then we start at 7 thirds again, but it doesn't include that number, to positive infinity. So here it is in interval notation. That's pretty sweet. Okay, just for the next one, let's go ahead and switch that back to red. Okay, so what we just defined there was a rational function. I had a function on top divided by a function on, on the bottom. What kind of functions were they? They were polynomials. So this is the definition of a rational function. It just looks like a rational number, right? You have one number, like an integer, on top of another integer. Except for this time, we have a polynomial function on top of a another polynomial function. Okay, so we're calling the top one n of x, like numerator, we're calling the bottom one d of x, denominator, and we just have to make sure that the denominator is not equal to zero. Oh, see, I switched the colors here. That's not cool. Okay, so talking about the domain, the domain for a rational function well, it should be all real numbers, except for those values that make the denominator equal to zero, because then we would, we would be dividing by zero. So, uh, and this is the cool part, we, we're just going to kind of get a sneak peek of this at the end of the lesson. The next lesson, that's where all the interesting things happen for the graphs. They look, they look way cooler than just a parabola, way cooler than just uh, polynomial graphs. Just wait and see. They're pretty fun to graph. Okay, so to find the domain of a rational function, three easy steps. Step number one, set the bottom not equal to zero. Okay, step number two, solve that in equation for x. It's not an equation, it's an equation, whatever you want to call it. You solve it just like you were solving a regular equation. All right, and then finally, whatever x values you get, 
those are the ones that have to be taken out of the domain. It's all real numbers except for those numbers. Okay? So, oh yeah, and I might have something like that if I was writing it in set builder notation, if I was. So let's try this on a couple of examples here. Find the domain of each of these functions. So, I don't even have to worry about the top. Top doesn't even matter. For the domain, I just have to make sure the bottom is not equal to zero. This not equal to zero. Okay, so what number would make that equal to zero? I would subtract the eight over, divide it by two, x is not equal to negative four. Here it is in set builder notation and in interval notation. It's everything except for negative four, so from negative infinity to negative four, parentheses around these, union, negative four again, all the way up to positive infinity. It's a piece of cake, very, very easy. Okay, so look at number two. Number two looks just like number one, but I just flipped it. Is that gonna make a big, a big difference? Yes, because now what's on the bottom is different. And that's the part that I care about. Let's make this nice and colorful. How about this tiny purple? Let's make sure that the bottom is not equal to zero. All right, this means that I'm gonna have to factor that thing. So let's open ourselves up some parentheses, not equal to zero. Uh, let's try a 3x and a 3x, right? And of course for 10, how about a, a 5 and a 2? So on the out, outside I'd have 6, on the inside I'd have 15, that would work, so I put negative 15, positive 2. So there we go, got it factored. So there's the bottom, whoops, the bottom factored. And now set each of those not equal to zero. It's just like solving a polynomial equation, a quadratic, whatever. Except for this time I have a not equal sign in it. So on the first one, add over the five, divide by three, x cannot be equal to five thirds. Next one, subtract the two over, divide by three, negative two thirds. Set builder. Okay, and now, uh, how about interval? Again, uh, a number line will make this tremendously, tremendously helpful. Um, zero, let's say that's about five-thirds. Let's say this is about negative two-thirds. They get open circles, of course. And then everything else is colored in. I got all this. I got other stuff in between it. Got stuff on the outside. So notice I'm going to have three pieces, three little intervals. From negative infinity all the way up to negative two-thirds parentheses around everything, union, and then I have the middle bit from negative two-thirds to five-thirds, okay, union, and then finally the right-hand side of that, five-thirds to infinity. So here's that, and uh, interval notation, that was pretty fun, that was pretty sweet. Okay, so that'll be it for this video, and the next one we're going to actually figure out how to find those asymptotes. When we do divide by zero, what's going to happen? So, let's look for that video. Next.